Welcome to this week's episode of Your Business Unleashed podcast. I've got a guest today who I've wanted to have on for a long time, and we just managed to finally go out for lunch a couple of weeks ago and arrange a time to get uh, to get him on. And uh, you know, one of one of Calgary's most popular photographers, Neil Zeller. Thanks for joining me, Neil. Thanks for having me, Clay. Yeah, we've known each other for what five or six or seven years now, something like that. Quite a while, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And uh, I've I've sort of watched you and been with you through your through a lot of your journey, and I'm always impressed, um, not only by uh, your resilience and positivity, but uh, man, I was just on your website again today, and and your images are just shockingly beautiful. Like you you just you nail it, man. And I I you know when you come whether you're coming in to do a headshot for for us or if you're out doing nature photography, I'm just constantly blown away at how you make a camera make that magic. So. Thank you for your gift to the world. <laughs> well, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's it's a joy to share uh, the things that I love. Um, it's one of the things that I've tried to do from the very beginning is to um, connect with people with the things that I love, right? It's easier to share and uh, be a positive influence in this kind of negative world that we live in now. So it's been the, one of the goals from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So take me back to the very beginning. How did you... I know you were doing something before photography and you actually got into photography sort of late in life, right? I, I, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I had a midlife creative as I, as I've coined that phrase now nice. um, at 40 years old, I I went to Tracy, my wife and said, uh, I, I'm not fulfilled. I'm not like I'm, I'm in this sales career. I was selling contract office furnishings to the big towers downtown in the heydays. And uh, it was a lucrative career and I was good at it. Um, but it just wasn't fulfilling. And I was turning 40 that year and it, and I ended up, um, you know, having to make some hard choices. Yeah. 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 Not really that hard though. Right. Well, it was because you, you take a, uh, Tracy had stayed home. Like her goal, um, mm. in life was to raise our son. And right. so she, yeah. she had taken that on. He was, um, you know, just turning six at the time. And, and uh, you know, our, our our main thing in life is to, you know, turn him into a good human being. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this is a decade later now and things have worked out that way. But, uh, you know, being a sole breadwinner um, yeah. in, in, in working for a company that supported me that way, you know, I had monthly draws, I had, uh, you know, commission sales, um, things were going good to just kind of drop all of that, give six months notice in that career, um, to become a photographer, which I wasn't at the time. I had a beginner camera. I was an automatic setting shooter on the on the on the camera. Um, but I chose to become a photographer. Took six months to learn it. Um, took everything I had learned in business to that date, in my commission sales and the businesses that I had in the past, and uh, applied it to um, this new venture. And just on July first, twenty thirteen, just right out of the gate, just went for it. Yeah. And so what was your, do you remember what your first job was? What was your first job in photography? <laughs> so I had, I was pretty ballsy. I, I went to Mayor Nenshi's office. Like he was in his heyday um, at the very beginning of his uh, first term. And I went to his office in April that year as this new photographer. And I just, for some reason, I, I, I made an appointment with the, with the office, met uh, Franca, who's the his EA and sat down with her and had a chat and uh, said, listen, I want to follow the mayor during his campaign in October for his reelection. And just, just to, and I'll, and I'll just do it for nothing. And um, I want to sort of be that, that photographer. I've seen other photographers, Adam Scotty for Trudeau and um, you know, uh, Sousa for, for Obama and stuff. And I kind of wanted to be that for uh, Mayor Nenshi. And uh, she said, fine, whatever, like, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll contact you. And then in, in June of 2013, our city flooded. And, yes. uh, and, oh, and wow. so, same year. yeah, yeah, same year. Yeah. So I had ha had all these cheesy uh, brochures printed up on like orange paper that I was just going to drop off to all my old furniture clients and everybody else I knew that saying I'm a photographer now. So go ahead and hire me. And then our city flooded, closed downtown and canceled that. But I got a call on like the probably 7th of June, something like that. The city was kind of cleaning up. Um, from the major parts of the flood, the water had been receding, and I'd been out um, every day during the floods, from day one of the floods when the when the water rushed in, and taking, taking these photos of the city, and and I had um, like my new social media accounts for the photography side of things, and and the water levels 
um, equated to the graphs of sort of the reach that I had in my social media accounts. It sort of matched it, you know, as the water got higher and higher, so did my media accounts. So it was really interesting that way. But I got a call from the mayor's office and said, listen, uh, on Canada Day, on July 1st, um, we're going to go around and do the Canada first, or the Canada Day things that um, are important to the mayor. The There was a citizenship ceremony at Heritage Park. We had the uh, Fort Calgary event. There was a few breakfasts that were going on. And so they invited me to on, on July 1st, 2013. And that was my very, very first day as a full-time photographer. So I piled into the back of the Suburban with the mayor and rode around with him on Canada Day. And they liked the photos enough that they invited me to to hang out with him for the entirety of Stampede that year as well. So for days and days and days, I was with him and stuff. And so you want to talk about a, a, a really, really sharp entrance into the world of being a photographer. Um, one of the most visible things that have happened in Calgary was one of the most visible personalities. And uh, my name attached to all the, all the assets that kind of came out of that time. And it was uh, a pretty, pretty incredible way to get my name out there right from the very beginning. Yeah, neat, neat. And how audacious to start. I mean, you go from um, you go from single single uh, income breadwinner um, to, you know, ripping off the Band-Aid for all intents and purposes. I guess the six month buffer is nice, but that's you're right. That would that would be terrifying. But you did it. And then you were audacious enough to just show up in the mayor's office and do what you've always been doing, which is a little bit of selling, right? Yeah, a little bit of, yeah you know. for sure. And yeah. I bought my first professional camera with my last uh, tax refund. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there she goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right on. Uh, yeah, it was it was a really interesting time. Um, I had done some research on um, other photographers' rates. Okay. And um, I didn't want to put myself in competition with everyone. So when I came out, I needed to make a living. So I looked at how much money I needed, what I was making, how much I was taking home, um, how much, you know, what my costs are going to be. I did a quite a quite a good analysis of what I was going to need every month. And I ended up um, coming out of the gate on on my first sort of year of, of business as a photographer, three to four times more expensive than the what what the published rates were for most photographers and most photographers are really really good at undervaluing themselves right out of the gate yeah. um i've always professed that it's easier to sort of you know bring your price down when necessary than it, it, you know it's impossible to bring it up yeah right? it was as soon yeah. as you've set a price so um two things happened is one is um people hired me um you know the work was good enough um the the connection was good enough to the client um you know my goal for, one of my goals from the beginning was to you know make them look good to their bosses that tasked them with hiring a photographer so <laughs> trying working really really hard to sort of solve those problems i had i had learned enough in commission sales through my courses with um, a, a local um, consultant uh, les hewitt uh, i've done dale carnegie sales training courses and, uh, you, you know, learn that, uh, you know, you, you take care of, you know, you answer all the questions. You don't sell, you answer all the questions, you know, yeah. you, you solve their problems. Yeah. And so it helps somebody buy. Way. Yeah. And so yeah. the other thing it did for me raising the prices is it took me out of competition from 95% of the other photographers out there. We're rightly so or not from the beginning. You know, there's phenomenal photographers, like they, they still blow my mind. They're better than me. Um, they take incredible art photography, their business photography, their advertising, headshots, everything are just incredible. And it's something to aspire to. Um, and I have done that for the last decade. Um, but there's always going to be someone better than you, but um, you can all you can be the best business person, too. Right. And so I worked really hard on that to sort of make sure that I was I'm the easiest one to connect to. I'm the I'm the the one who's sort of watching the crescendo of the event so they don't have to have these massive shot lists. You know, people trust me to make sure I'm going to capture the things that need to be captured at these events um, to make sure their people look good in their headshots. And, um, you know, there's sort of a, a an extrovert's world in there that I, I didn't know existed that I've had to work on. But um, it's uh, from the beginning, I've, I've made it a, a task in my business. Would you say you're an extrovert? No, I've never been. Um, I would rather no, very, very, very much. Um, I mean, this is our, all very extroverted stuff. When people come to you, they're coming to you now because you know your whole brand and your whole image and everything online just screams that. Listen, I'm going to have a good experience with this guy, right? And and you know, you go on to your testimonials, and you know, and she's right at the top, and you go, okay, 
we're going to have a good, this person's good at connecting with people. And so I go, okay, nice. We're going to have a good extroverted experience, but you wouldn't consider yourself to be an extrovert. No, I wouldn't. It's something that I am nervous before every single shoot to this day, um, because A, I don't know what's going to happen, right? You, you never know what's going to show up in front of your camera, even in the most produced advertising shoots. Like I've been in helicopters over oil fields in Grand Prairie. Um, you know, I chased the holiday train. I've I've been involved in brand new events. I've I've been the photographer for the opening of the Calgary Library, Platform Calgary, uh, the National Music Center, um, all these places that are that are brand new and and sort of been charged with capturing these iconic ones in a lifetime. I've been in I've I've been in charge of uh, photographing first airplane landings like when Idlewise came and um you know these these different uh, airlines that have come i've been standing on the runway as these these planes have been landing and i have one shot to get these photos so i'm nervous all the time and and i think that nerve actually creates a bit of a um an edge to me that that takes the introvert out of me um and makes me um do take all the steps to to be that forward fronted person it it, it felt it feels diminishing now but i used to joke that um, I was always the jester, right? I would do this joke where, you know, you have arms on the strings and sort of I'm that guy to the people to make sure that they're having a good time. Um, but, it, but it was it, it kind of insulting myself a little bit with it, right? So now it's, it's more that um, I'm responsible for the look of this event, right? And I, you know, and I want to be a part of the event um, in a way that's positive for everyone, right? Even the people standing in front of me, you know, there's, there's a seriousness to it, but there's also a, a levity as well that I can I can manage now. But uh, it, it takes a lot of time and sort of effort to to create that and intention feeling and intention. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I mean, every time that we've ever had a, a session together, um, you know, consistently, it, it, people are going, hey, you know, Neil gets us smiling, right? Like, I don't I don't think that's necessarily the jester thing, but you know, the value equation to me it is so interesting to think of what is the value equation of a photographer and by the way half of what you're saying can apply to every entrepreneur you know price yourself higher think about the business what's the extra value you bring are you an introvert or an extrovert play to your strengths all that stuff and you go what is the extra value of a photographer okay well now we've got a photographer who, for, who is thinking of i'm not here to simply snap pictures of what's going on around me i need to create an environment that portrays the intention of the person who's hired me and how do we do that? Right. And that's, yeah. that takes a lot of, and I love that about you. So yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. We, I pay attention, right? Like I'm, I, I, I'll study the event ahead of time. I'll, I'll see who I'm working for. I get a lot of public relations and marketing firms that hire me for their clients. Right. And so I'll ask a lot of questions in those conversations. Um, you know, it's never about the rate anymore, right? The rates, the rate, they're happy with that. Yeah, um, it's about delivering the the goods to them, right? And you know, you know, what are these you know simple questions like what are these photos for, right? Are they for celebrating this event or is it for selling the next one? Um, and that changes how I'm going to photograph it, right? Is it for you personally as the PR company? Is it for the clients? You know, are they doing newsletters later on? Do they have a marketing angle for this? So, um, just sort of understanding, you know, going into to everything that I'm working on, um, you know, changes how I act, how I react, how I um, plan and, and prepare and where I stand in the room. You know, if I've got to be in front and apologizing to people for staring at my backside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. as the bold photographer, you got to be up front. Right. So. Yeah. It's super interesting. And I, and I don't even, yeah. I, you know, I think about, I think about scalability constantly and it's like how, you know, in your, in your line of work, I mean, you are so it like, you know, people want you, right? And and it's it's so interesting to hear you talk about these things and the and the contemplation that goes into a, a pre shoot or whatever. And I, yeah. Anyways, it's really neat. So you've done some cool things, like you've taken people cool places. You're about to take people cool places. That's always a fun conversation. I can just sit there and eat a lunch and listen to you talk about what you got coming up or where you've been. Why don't we do that for a minute? Like, tell me about. Tell me about taking people places and, and what you've seen out there. So I take pictures of the night sky. Okay. 
And that was always the thing that I used to protect my love of photography because getting into business, I love photography. I wasn't particularly good at it. I was starting to understand nights, night skies, which is an interesting um, genre in photography, right? It's a, it's a lonely genre. It's an introvert genre, which is really nice for some of us when we want to sort of recharge our souls. We stand at three o'clock in the morning, leaning on the hood of our vehicle while the camera sits there and does the work once the settings are plugged in. But um, I used the night sky photography northern lights meteor showers milky way work in the middle of the night to protect my love of photography because i knew going into business as a photographer um there could be a, a an opportunity to resent the work as the business gets bigger and harder um as it does um especially when things start rolling around like you know pandemics and yeah. you know downturns in the economy and whatnot where we have to work you know extra hard to sort of make ends meet but uh, I had people asking me, um, hey, Neil, I want to learn, you know, you, you take these amazing night sky photography um, shots. Can you teach me? They're like, nah, I don't want to teach. Right? No, can you, can you know, teach me? Enough people asked that one day I said, sure, let's go out where, where there's, there might be an aurora storm that's Milky Way season. Um, you know, it's the end of November. Um, let Meet me at the Tim Hortons on McKnight by the airport at 10 o'clock at night, and I'll take you out for a couple hours, bring 40 bucks. And 14 people showed up and I was like, hmm, <laughs> it was a great <laughs> night. We had lots of fun. Um, and so I started doing these little impromptu night sky um, outings, right? And they turned out really good. And that that grew into, you know, now we do trips like for 14 days to the Arctic. We go to Tanzania um, on groups fully um the logistics the the travel the the you know the, i have uh, travel doctors that come to my um, open houses on events to africa to talk about um you know the things they need to do i've got these teams of people that are sort of around me helping um you know uh, logistics builders in countries and 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 up north that are taking care of me to, to build these these major events and then i then i also back home i'm teaching like a two-day beginner class um, and that this, and I'm going on like one day trips to look at canola, take pictures of deer in canola in July. I'm doing uh, moraine lake tours. I have a, you know, my, my tour van that I have now that took years to get. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm pretty fortunate that way. Pre pandemic, we were looking at probably 85% of the business was teaching and touring. And uh, obviously that was wiped out completely, right? That, you know, I shoot major events. Um, and I teach and, and that was completely gone at the time. Um, yeah. but, you know, and I think we were a couple of years away from hundred percent teaching and touring and now we're five years away, um, you know, post pandemic here. Um, but it's, it's, you know, we're sort of getting back on track to, to get, you know, back to that goal. But, uh, uh Calgary supports me in massive ways with, with major events and headshots and the, the other things I do. So it's been, it's been fabulous, but yeah, the teaching side of things is, is just been spectacular. The travel yeah, right and teaching and, um, lots of work, lots of logistics, um, you know, hotels and 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 the best restaurants. And th that doesn't mean the fanciest ones, but that means the mom and pops along the way. We we, we don't eat at, at chain restaurants. We, you know, make sure everybody has these culinary experiences along the way. Um, connections in the van. There's no carpools, right? We have everybody's in the van and gets to, to meet each other and, um, you know, builds a community along the way. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the main thing, right, is the community. Um you know, I remember you telling me early on that you about your Facebook following and um, or yeah, I think it was Facebook following. You had a Facebook group going or yeah. something. And anytime you'd announce, hey, I'm going to and and it just just for the record, I don't think you sell education on photography. I think you're selling experiences, right? Like you're, yeah. you're selling it. You're selling it a whole experience. I get to go sit in the van for however long with Neil. And I realize he's introverted, but he's going to make it happen. And we're going to go shoot some pictures of... They, they don't think I'm introverted. <laughs> no, I know, right? But you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the beauty of what you do. Um, does that push you out of your comfort zone? Or are you, you, you're just naturally good at it or what? what the, where I'm out of my comfort zone is um, in, in the corporate photography side of things, right? Where I'm, I'm like, I'm a Saskatchewan farm kid. Yeah. Um, you know, I... I took the sales job because initially I was uneducated, right? Like it was, you know, I did, did sales, um, worked out, um, you know, got an entrepreneurial spirit, which has sort of driven me to kind of create and sort of, and find, um, you know, ways to sort of quench my, my creative soul as well. But, uh, 
when I'm teaching, I am in my element. I have realized that. I, I, t- I tell my son, I said, like, look, do the things you want, you love right now. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Do everything you love right now. Like, I, it took me till I was 40 to embrace my inner nerd. And it feels like a, re- a, a regret for every year before that, that I tried to be something else, that I tried to be, um, you know, what that sales group thought I should be, what, what you know, what I, what the world sort of was pushing me to be in that sales and entertainment world um, that I just didn't fit in, right? A square peg, round hole. Um, but since I turned 40 and I did this, I've been able to be myself, you know, 97%. With, and, and when I'm teaching and touring, it's 100% me. I get to sort of express myself um, in, in ways that are me um, to the to the joy and grace and benefit of sort of everyone around me, including our service providers. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the experience that I provide isn't just for my customers, my clients that, that buy these trips, that come on these trips, these experiences. Um, I demand... And we have conversations during and and before the trips. I demand that my people um, share the experience with every single person around us. We 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 we've called it flipping the script. We've had servers in restaurants in Dawson City where there's only two restaurants open, and the server goes from restaurant to restaurant for breakfast, lunch, and supper, and we see them all the time. And my first comment to them is while they're getting seated is, "You you deal with everyone, okay? We're good. We have time." Right. We, we my group is happy here. You know, if we get water on the table, that's great for now. Come see us when you're ready. Um, I know you're really busy. And it honestly, it, they, they get so shocked by that because they are getting beat up by people yeah. all day long. And it yeah. just changes everything for them. It changes the and, and our people are happy because now they realize that we're we just get to have a conversation, and relax while we're waiting. Um, but then we've taken all the pressure off the, off of the servers, drivers, yeah. um, you know, everybody around us. Um, even to the point where I've created these little catchphrases, these, these philosophies in my traveling and touring. And, and my favorite one is, um, you know, post pandemic, we, people are, if you haven't grieved, if you haven't got through the four stages of grieving of our past life, especially for travel and, and vacations and whatnot, because if you've noticed in travel that it's not the same, right. Our world is very, yeah. <laughs> very different now. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I watched a comedian in March of 2021, I think it was coming out of the pandemic. And he said, everything's going to be a little shittier now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. You just have to accept it. Right. If you're not grieving, if you've not grieved fully for your past life and you're still sort of fighting, you're still in denial of, of what it is now, you're going to have trouble. So when I'm touring people and and nothing goes exactly as planned anymore. Right? Yeah. Um, everything out of my control, whether it's hotel rooms and restaurants and and roads closed and the things that happen on our trips, the clouds come out to the northern lights or behind the clouds kind of thing. Right. I demand that my. I, yeah. But you can control the positive experience. Right. That's that is your control. Right. And so the philosophy is, um, you know, when you're when you're faced with adversity while traveling, um, handle at minimum that adversity with grace and optimally, optimally with joy. Yeah. And what happens is when you do that, when you, it, it just takes a, just a shift in your mind to just go, okay, we're handling this, you know, the person who is in front of us that is presenting us with this challenge, you know, if you deal with them with grace, right, it's going to turn everything around to the point where they're going to work harder for you to help solve this problem, as opposed to you pulling your hair out and screaming and yelling at them, and blaming, and because typically it's not their fault. It's not, you know, whatever's happened is so out of control from everybody. Yeah. Um, What happens is that puts you back on the path that you were meant to be on, as opposed to pushing that river the entire time, right? And it it sets you back on your correct path and the things that you were supposed to see that that you're supposed to experience um, on that tour will now begin to happen again, as opposed to you being sort of so frustrated. I just listening to everything you're saying, like I've got this theory about about the you know the before times and COVID. We, I call them the before times, and and then there's COVID, and you go, what I think you know if something good has come out of this. I think that there is a, a I think we got so immersed in our digital selves um, before before in the before times, like it was coming to a sort of a I didn't like where it was going, and what has come out of the pandemic that I think has been positive is what I say is we've got this 
renaissance of human connection happening where people are, you know, craving to be in front of other people, like, you know, in live connections with people. And we're doing this on Zoom right now for the benefit of my YouTube channel. But if, uh, you know, if it wasn't for the YouTube channel and I had a proper camera set up, I'd ask you to be in the office because it's just better. Right. And I, and I think that a lot of people are craving that. And you are with your business, you are directly scratching that itch for yeah. huge positive uh, awesome human experience, right? And uh, yeah, and I think that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the community that's built inside the van is, um, you know, one that I'm incredibly proud of. Um, we've had we've had people meet on my tour and been married. <laughs> we've had people meet and and for the first time in their life met on my tour and now travel the world together, best friends, family vacations together, you know, all, and, and it happens often. Um, people find, you know, like-minded um, folks that you would never find elsewhere. Um, I yeah. am less and less and less and less on social media now um, for so many reasons um, and more and more and more kind of hosting and, and um, creating these, these sort of in-person events that people just love to be a part of. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting time since the since we've opened back up again. It's it's really been um, there's a divisiveness that happened during COVID, um, but there's also a connectedness within within our totally. own sort of within our own groups. And I'd agree with that. Yeah. So, tell me some business lessons you learned in Tanzania because I know I know you got some <laughs> great stories from there. So, um, first time I went to Tanzania was pre pandemic. Um, uh, I had gone on the on spec um through another logistics provider um and the one thing he did not do was create an expectation for us to know what was going to happen right and on a trip like that when people are paying tens you know of thousands of dollars to go on a trip um you have to lay out the expectations you have to let people know what it's going to be like and and uh, this person didn't and we were surprised all along everybody on the trip knew it was kind of a scouting trip as well and there was a discount available for that for that trip so nobody was was upset about it but um the expectations were um never laid out um even including how much money you take out of the bank before like we ended up all broke on the road ouch in tanzania that's <laughs> in probably tanzania. not a good place to be out of cash yeah it was a yeah because everything is a cash society over there right so we ended up we found that there was a brand new bank in this tiny little town in the middle of nowhere between lake natron and the serengeti that we found and it was like this oasis of cash that we because <laughs> we, we were all pooling our money to sort of pay tips and um you know buy food and stuff along the way and it was it was interesting the other one was uh um, how long the trips are um how long the trip is and how you know how rough the roads are and whatnot and um so what i the, the biggest thing i learned in that one was to just really really spell out the expectations so the next trip the you know post pandemic that we went on um was spectacular everybody knows everybody knew what to expect everybody you know every day i was able to sort of lay it out because i took over the logistics myself um, right knowing what i knew um but the other one was the human connection right we go we go to a place like tanzania um people travel there's a lot of people travel to um, expand their way of life um, but there's also a real subset that demand their way of life on tour right and uh, it, it, the demanding ones are the entitled sort of the people who are looking for their food you know this food is bad so you know mine mine is better at home or whatever right like it's not let's not uh, make it you know about that let's make it about you know sharing these experiences so the second time we went um, I made sure that we were ingrained into the people right where we connected again with the, with the folks that are that are working um you know immediately when we arrived in camps i made connections with the people and sort of and enabled them to sort of let their guard down a little bit to, to sort of yeah. be themselves and show us their way of life yeah and um we had we were we were brought into the fold everywhere we went with with um in ways that sort of made the other tables like even in camps where there was more than us in camp um they you could see their little bit of jealousy because we were getting sort of a, a different level of service treatment. a different yeah. different level of sort of connection with the people and and uh you know there's maybe a language barrier from some of them that they couldn't that, you know there's no way to cross it because english if you didn't know english or swahili it was it's a tougher connection right um 
and I tried to learn some Swahili too. So yeah, learn learn the phrases in the language. I think that's a, a, a you learn how to say you know hello my friend in 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 the local language. So I've done that. Uh, yeah. Jambo Rafiki is hello my friend, and and they they, they appreciate the effort. The uh, the the whole customer experience thing. Map out the journey and and set expectations up front. I mean, um, I can't think of a better example to do that on than a trip to a foreign country. That is, we're talking. I've never been, but I just got back from uh, Southeast Asia and it's totally different. Like, you totally know, different. it's totally different. And so to yeah. go in with, I'm going to have my McDonald's bacon and egg or, and my, you know, my, I want my double, double um, and, and have those expectations going in because nobody's reset those for you. I mean, what a good yeah. lesson in business, right? Uh, what, what can I expect from our interaction that I'm paying you for? What can I expect here? And yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, like I I tell people that, you know, the logistics side of things, um, the scenery takes care of itself. We don't talk a lot about that, right? These are photographer sure. enthusiasts, right? That's the easy part for me, right? The yeah. managing the experience is is the big one and making sure that they understand what's coming up. Um, we sit around. Here's another thing I do on every single multi-day tour that I host is at supper time every night. I lay out what we're doing tomorrow and what the options are and what the challenges might be. We, you know, I look at the weather, I look at our opportunities and we're there for a reason. We're there for genres. Like we go up Northern Saskatchewan to find whooping cranes. We go to Cypress Hills to find big skies and, and night skies, um, you know, all over Southern Alberta, looking for deer and canola uh, during canola season, um, you know, out to Moraine Lake for sunrise, um, setting these expectations. Um, I sit around on the overnight trips and lay out the day have a great, uh, um, you know, uh, conversation about what's going to happen. Then I ask them two questions. We go around the whole table. First question is, what was your win today? You know, what what was your win? And your win can be anything from, and a lot of it, sometimes it's like, well, this, this, the, the person we met in this cafe, because I'm always sort of, you know, we're, 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 a, we're a conspicuous group when we pull into a cafe in Hafford, Saskatchewan, and it's like the handshakers cafe where all the farmers come in and sit at a table and we show up out of nowhere in this van and, and uh, we get a lot of looks and I'll, I'll, I'll connect with those looks. I'll say, Hey, yeah. you know, good to meet you. Right. And we'll have these yeah. conversations. And, um, and so we go around the table and have these wins um, and, and everybody shares that. Right. And there's always, there's always like the common ones you know, if we saw a leopard in a tree in Africa, I'll take it off the table. I said, you can't use the leopard in the tree. Right. Just to, cause everybody's going to use that one. Cause it's such a spectacular moment. Um, so it's got to be something else, right? And the second question I ask, and you know, once they know what's happening tomorrow, once they know what happened today, maybe there were some technical challenges with cameras, maybe there was some, you know, somebody elbowed me out of the way or whatever. <laughs> How can we help you achieve your goals tomorrow? And what that does is two things is for me, is it lets me understand what to look for for them. You know, I'm not skipping over them in, in a way that um, is unintended, but still skipping over them, right? Maybe they're looking for wildflowers on the side of the road. Maybe they're looking for a specific bird. Like people, there are some people that have a specific yeah. bird they need. Um, and the second thing it does is it puts everybody on everybody else's table, right? Like it, and they understand what they're looking for. If we are stopping, for, hey, hey, you know, Jim, there's that bird you were looking for, right? Let's get that, right? And everybody's yeah. cheering for him now, as opposed to tapping their toe, going, "When are we getting to my thing?" Yeah, because they've just they, created they, a bunch of a bunch more community, a different level of community. Yeah, we're and all then, watching each other's backs. I we really that. are. We really are. Right. Um, I did a. I do a um, two two major events for these Africa trips. One is a sort of a preview of the event for you know to try and sell the event out. Um, you know, everybody can come to this open house. No, you know, it's not like a timeshare. We're going to get shuttled off to the side and you know make sure make you write a check, but it's going to give you all the you know initial details to to make a, an informed decision on spending a bunch of money. Second one is once everybody's paid up and ready to go, I do a pre-event and uh, we talk about, um, you know, the, all the expectations and what we're going to go through and where we need money and how we're going to eat. And, you know, you know yeah, you're going to have to use a squatty potty in a gas station. And, you know, that, <laughs> Vicks, you know, that Vicks vapor rub, you put it on your upper lip before you go in there and the little, <laughs> little, little, little tricks that we can uh, make sure that we uh, end up, um, you know, making sure everybody's comfortable with. Um yeah, it's a it's a fabulous um, you know way to have everybody connected. Uh, the, and the one thing I tell them in this event before we leave is, you know, you then I point to one of them are are one hundred percent responsible for that person. Point to someone else, their satisfaction of this trip. I said we're there for nine. We're in we're on the safari for nine days. It's such a short amount of time. If you have grievances, if you have any issues going on, please air them. Please come to me. Go to the person who's 
you know, potentially unaware of what they're doing to you, whatever, right? We're grown up people. Let's make sure that we are not wasting a single moment of this yeah. with sort of grievances. Yeah. Yeah. More, more, more great business lessons in there. Expectations, <laughs> transparency, accountability, yeah. community. I mean, this is all, this is a set of core values, right? These are your core values in your business, right? And you've got them, you've got them defined pretty much if, through your presentations on these trips. I love it. Neil, what else do you want to talk about today? What else do you want to talk about? Because I, you know, the other thing that comes to mind for me, uh, for you is, um, you know, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on overcoming adversity, but you've been able to shift your business on a dime, like quite a number of times. And I, I'm always amazed at how you come up with the ideas to do that. Uh, and you, and you've pulled through. So, um, you know, I guess, congratulations, and maybe we don't need to talk about it much more than that. But if you have any advice for others who are dealing with some adversity and need to shift and are scared or whatever, what would you say to them? Because you're really good at it. Yeah, I don't think you need to put yourself in a position where you are one dimensional, like the thing that you do that made your living make, might get wiped off the map on, you know, March 18th, 2020, um, to a point where you are absolutely, completely done with the business that you had created over the previous seven years. Um, don't be afraid to just do almost anything to sort of survive that, right? Um, we, I'd seen a guy in up north called Pat Kane, phenomenal photographer from Yellowknife. He took a picture of his neighbor through the glass in front of his house. And I said, that's it, right? Three days after we were all locked down on March 20, 20th, I think it was a Sunday, I called down to a neighbor. I said, are you home? Which says, yeah, go out on the porch and take a picture of you, right? And this is when we were all scared of connecting and being more than 40 feet from, from each other. We were locked in our homes. And uh, so I took this picture and then set up ticketing and created this, this you know, the port portraits. Um, and then I went to 650 people's homes over the next four months and took pictures of them on their porches. And that survived us, right? That that is something that I, you know, I've, I, did, I photographed like five families in the seven years before that. And then I photographed 650 families. And since then, I photographed like 30 families more right it's not something i did and not something i wanted to do um but doing it with the you know, grace and joy again right going back to that sort of adage right when you're when you're faced with an, an adversity if you had minimally grace it, optimally with joy um handling these things it can change everything right it's it survived us i i i, I was the positive news cycle yeah the first four months of of covid right like that there's a, a few things that I'm known for. One is the holiday trains, floating train on this, on the Lethbridge viaduct. Um, great picture. The, the, the peace bridge was the thing that I, I helped change Calgarians minds about the peace bridge when it first came, when it first opened um, port portraits is another one. Um, Northern lights and, and a thing called Steve in the sky um, in, in the night sky that I, I helped um, identify first. Um, which has has sort of given me, if you Google me, those are kind of the four things that come up and it's, and it's a lot. There's another guy in, in Oregon, his name's Neil Zeller, spelled the same way. And he's a, <laughs> he's an insurance salesman and I, I, I've never met him, never talked to him, but I feel like he's really mad at me because if he Googles himself, he's got to go uh, probably 40 or 50 pages back before he <laughs> finds anything on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> you know, even, even just your, I want to go take pictures of the thing like i'm gonna go take pictures of the thing hey who wants to learn how to take pictures of the thing like you're just the ideas the idea flow out of you is amazing and i'm so impressed by it the other uh, thing i've done the other thing i've done clay um that has changed kind of how i what what i know um especially on the teaching side of things is i will hire um subject matter experts um i hire so i i during toward the end of covid um i was doing uh, I did a train expert. I hired a train expert, CP rail employee drives. She's a locomotive engineer. Um, he's part of the heritage department that runs the, the, the business train and the holiday train. And I hired him to come out and be an expert to, to help us find and photograph trains. Um, I went to the Calgary airport and hired an air traffic controller to be a subject matter expert um, on my tour. And we went all over the airport, took pictures and 
Um, the next time we do it, we actually get a tour of the tower now that everything's opened up again. So that'll be a lot of fun. Cool. Um, I hired Harry Sanders, you know, the, the he's the uh, Calgary's historian, Harry the historian. And we walked down Stephen Avenue and he pointed out all these historical things on Stephen Avenue um, and in back alleys around there. And I also hired Chris Fisher. He wrote the 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 um, cult following um, book, The Birds of Alberta, 20 years ago. And I've hired him for many things, um, uh, bird related, because people love birding, right? The photographers, yeah. once, once yeah. you get good, the better and better at photography, birds just become part of the part of the thing you want to chase. So he's actually co-hosting my Africa trip. He co-hosts my Northern Saskatchewan trip. Cool. And I've learned so. So don't feel like you need to do things and learn things by yourself. You can bring these subject matter experts in and uh, be a part of your team to help support your your goals and visions and in, in what you're doing. Yeah, don't go it alone. Great lesson. Great yeah. lesson. How do we find you? If and, and what what kind of things what what kind of things would I come and find you for? You know, given the uh, the audience of the podcast is mostly entrepreneurs. Uh, yeah, um, I imagine I imagine some digital creatives are going to end up listening to this one. So, but what what where would I find you? And what? So one of the I things I want to do more now that I have the van um, is I can create and I've and I've done it. Um, some very very cool um, corporate retreat kind of outings right i can put nice. um you know eight people in the van yeah um, and we can have these sort of meaningful outings where um, i don't just teach photography i teach seeing yeah right i teach how to sort of um you know connect with our environments uh, around us wherever we are what to you know how to how to hone in that that little piece of light as opposed to and this this can stem right from taking pictures on your cell phone to your big camera whatever you have um but the outings are always meaningful um uh, in a way that you know how how we connect in the van and 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 how I'm able to um, show people how to see things differently and and better and it, it, in in uh, you know smarter maybe more efficient ways. Um, you know, it looking for the anomaly, the human can it obviously improve the human connection, right? You're really good at that, so I can yeah, imagine. So, so, I yeah, can so see far. those being really good idea for a corporate team. Frankly. Yeah, so corporate teams, um, you know, bringing me in to talk, I can speak on. Um, you know, a variety of subjects from, you know, basic camera functions to um, some of the things we spoke about today and the, the grace and joy and, um, you know, that that connection, how to see better, um, putting yourself in the path of great potential is another one, right? I, I, I one of my, one of my other catchphrases, is if you, if you put yourself in the path of great potential, you'll get lucky almost every time. I've got people that say, Neil, you're lucky. You're lucky all the time, right? Well, how can I be lucky all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe I've done the work. Maybe I've done the research. Maybe I put myself in the exact right place for this intersection of this moment to happen, right? Like we're scouting for for snowy owls right now to make sure that when we do the snowy owl tours later in the month and in January that we know exactly where to go to get lucky. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Um, you know, the so separation we're... is in the preparation, as one of my business coaches used to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. so exciting. So, uh, Neil Zeller photographer, Neil Zeller photo tours .com, um, awesome. is the the photo tours site. Um, I've got a, a lot of work to do on the on the SEO side of things on that one, um, but uh, you know, reaching out this way helps. Um, Neil Zeller photography .com is the art website um, that you can go to, and you want to purchase prints, you want to purchase uh, you know framed canvases, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, on social media, so I'm still on X slash Twitter, um, Neil underscore Z E E. Same handle on Instagram. Um, you can find me at, uh, at Facebook Neil Zeller Photography. Um, again, I'm there less and less, but it's uh, it's uh, still relevant in my life. Um, you know, I, I hope it always will be. I hope it comes back in a way that's sort of meaningful. And once we get through this sort of period in the, in our in the in the history of the world, that's divided some of us <laughs> yeah. and gets back yeah. to some more positivity and connection. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you so much at, uh, at minimum grace and optimally joy, Neil Zeller. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks Clay. Mm -hmm.